they used to have the he played it the, the trials. Right. I'm trying to tell it. Okay, go ahead and okay. tell it. Okay. So he was with the Opry and he was at the he's, end. You sit on the couch, Bill, if you want to. He was that. at the end of the Opry show. And Howard said a lot of people left because it was these old farmers and people who came to see Grand Ole Opry and Elvis came out and they started leaving. That was the second one, right, was the Opry? Because it wasn't the Hank Snow show on the second time. That's right. So that would have been September. Now, Elvis was, would have been the headliner, but he'd have played at the end, like you he said. He played at the end. That's right. And these country farmers were there to see the Opry. And, they, and a lot of them left. That's funny. That's funny. So the first time he was there, what I we, don't know about well, that. he was there early May, 55. May of 55. But he was with the Hank Snow show. Mm -hmm. And so, like, yeah, and we went to the library and looked up the microfish and mm -hmm. found they didn't even put Elvis's name in the ad on most days, mm -hmm. and he was small there. Well, see, now Jeanette's still alive. She would remember it. That's Howard's daughter. No, that's Howard's uh, wife. Howard's wife. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Um, so Howard went. Howard and Jeanette. They were a young couple. So they both went. And they so went. So Jeanette's still alive. We just. We just passed by where she lives. We're not, we, we didn't come from far from there. She was at the show. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. wonder if she could FaceTime you. I don't know if she's got No, a, she do not know anything about all of that. So, yeah. So, there's somebody that was there. That's was incredible. Her. That's in your family. Yeah, but you could have talked to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She may still be at the shop. He could be, but I know Billy's got to get back. So you built this? Me and Gail. Wow. We, we gutted it. It, it was a ranch type house. And we added the. Uh, That's so incredible. It looks beautiful. It was similar to the house we lived in in Kempston. It was laid out a lot the same. And That's so, incredible. So we, spent, we took the roof off and went from there. We changed the walls around and completely redone it. Rewired it, replumbed it, everything. Yeah, it it's, didn't have air and heat. It what? Did, I said it didn't have air and heat. It didn't have a washer yeah. and had a washing machine in the kitchen. Didn't have a dryer. It had a dryer in the. Uh, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't have well, it back in the day, you hung your clothes outside anyway. Yeah, right. Right. You hung your clothes outside anyway. Right. Right. Yeah. Hey, trees looks good. I've got one more box of ornaments for you. Um, you just missed Shelby. She came down to help me. Well, I got to get back. Yeah. Um, we just came back through this way. I was coming back from Newburn. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really much out of the way. Right. What were you doing at Newburn? I, well, we, I, went, we went into the Shriners and mm -hmm. wanted to film in there, mm -hmm. which that's gotten flooded, so it's chained off. Okay. They left the door unlocked. It's closed down. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sudan Temple. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I don't even know if they're utilizing that place. No, it's it's in it's terrible shape. And um, oh. but then he figured out that he play he he ate at Chelsea Restaurant, which was called Williams. Which wasn't Ch yeah, I remember when it was Williams. So you remember when there used to be a sign that said "Famous from Miami to Florida, Maine, Miami, to, Florida. Maine to Florida." Uh huh. On it. Yeah. So Elvis was in there hanging out and signing autographs, I guess, right? And that, Not was, signing autographs, just eating. Yeah. Yeah. And then we think he spent the night. At um, the Queen Anne. Which yeah, was, that would have been. That's where, where you had your picture made. All three of those pictures up there were made in a studio that Anne. was at the Queen Anne. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so that but, would have been it, ten years but later. It burned. The Queen Anne was where First Citizen by Yeah, years. we we figured that out. But it burned, and they had your and they used yours for their promotion. Mm -hmm. So they still had it. And so they still had yours because when our house burned, then we went back to them to get the two boys' pictures. Mm -hmm. And they had yours made, and they still had a film of Clint. So that picture of me up there that you can't see from there was made at Queen Anne. That's, in yeah. that's incredible. So one thing, so we went to the library to look up the microfilm mm -hmm. of trying to find to see if there was a write-up about that show he's mm -hmm. doing. Then after we got here, just before we pulled up, I remember vaguely when Elvis died, wasn't there an article in the newspaper about Grandma living close to Elvis? The Sun Journal. I remember somebody talking about that being in the Sun Journal that 
I don't think so, Bill. But I might have the newspaper. I'd have to dig a lot to find it because so much of my stuff's in boxes. For some reason, that's what I remember. Uh, I could be remembering it wrong. So. Because your grandma never talked about it so much. It was Mary Ethel that talked about it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what street they would have lived on in Mississippi? when? Because you don't know where grandma lived in Mississippi, do you? Did she live in New Albany or Tupelo? Growing up, they lived in uh, Fulton and Tupelo. And the, what was her parents' name? You know? My mama. She was a Smith. Her daddy's name was Paul Ackley Smith, and her mother's name was, I think it was Mary, Mary Ethel. Some Sumner's. Do y'all want something to drink? I don't. No, thank you. We just stopped and got gas and got a drink and got water. At the Queen Anne, yeah. At the Queen Anne? Yeah. So the the photo. There was a, there so was is this Bill? Or is this Clint? That's Clint. That's, That's Clint. Clint. Bill's in the middle. This is Bill. Yeah. And then Joanna. that is Joanna. And yeah. all these were made at the Queen Anne. And then it burned. It burned, well, it burned in between. They had, the, the uh, studio had gone back in when we did Joanna's. All right. Oh, okay, so these two were taken, it burned, they fixed it, and then yeah. they took that picture. Yeah. Very cool. Man, this place is beautiful, y'all. Still not through with everything. Well, this thing's beautiful. So is this a refurb? There was a building here, and you yeah, changed I, it. I gutted it, new side and new windows. And so it. your wife's brother built this originally. Am I remembering that right? Uh, her uncle. Is that her uncle? Okay. Wow, this is really nice. Like the inside of a ship. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that's, else. That's the whole family. Yeah, look at the whole family right there. This is Clint. Yep. And that's Bill and his family and Joanna. And that's y'all. And that's, that's Clint, something else. That's Clint's wife Clint's and his wife, daughter. That's right. And that's uh, her daughter. Yeah. That's something else. You got a beautiful family. Yeah. Man, this thing's nice. Love this wood. I, I just put a heater in here. In fact, I've got to work on it a little bit more. There's a bedroom, and I got Jack and Jill bathroom. Mm-hmm. A shower. That's all you need. But I've redone everything. It looks really nice. Down on the river. Yep. It's really nice. But it's it's a good getaway for a weekend. Yeah. I, I'll be real honest with you, I'm really pushing to get it rid of so Scarlet. Yeah, could you come down. She spent yeah. one night. Really? Yeah, just not feeling good? Yeah. 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna step, step out of here. I don't know if you can get out that one. I think I got sand in front of Oh, me. you got sand in there? Oh yeah, I see you do. I was headed up there during the last hurricane. Yeah. Well, it looks really nice. It's beautiful out there. This, this uh, your handiwork. I didn't realize you were so handy. Well, <laughs> Bill was. We were talking about that. He's like, well, I'm not handy at all because Dad would. Uh, he wouldn't let me do anything. He said, hand me that. Hand me that uh, hammer. And get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I used him as gophers. <laughs> That's it. And I redone that. Clint had me with that one. This I building? Did this one pretty much by myself. Yeah. Put a new roof on. Yeah. This built the porches. Yeah. Well, that's unbelievable. This house, friends, this was a one story house. Yeah. And he took the roof off of it and put that second story on. Yeah. That thing is beautiful. Any issue with flooding up here? I mean, it would have Here to get. Irene, we had straight across the river there. Yeah. We had about an hour 
that the wind stayed right there. It coming out of the north. Yeah. And when it did, it pushed water up into the yard. But it just flooded it over, pushed it over, you're saying, from the wind. It, it didn't actually raise to up here. No. You even got a little sand down there. Back in, fill a little bit. When Irene come, it took out the bulkhead. Mm -hmm. I put a new bulkhead in, and the last hurricane that came in took a little bit of this took out. A little bit of that. So this is a new bulkhead. So how'd you uh, press those things down in there? You just beat them down in there? Vibrated them down. Vibrated They're them down, down about eight foot in the ground. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of work. Uh, from from my level there, the water, the waves were coming in. Right about up there. Wow. So he's it's saying they were, foot they were hitting up in here. It's 14 foot surge. Wow. But it still, it didn't it, get to it, the house. The waves are just breaking. It come up, water was pushed up to the carport, right to the carport. Wow. It's so never the house been, is just far enough away. Way. Huh? So it's just far enough away to oh, be yeah. out of it, yeah. But once the wind shifted, when it come out of the northwest, all this water went out to the end of the pier. Yeah. There won't no water from here to the end of the pier. Wow, so it was just gone. I've seen that before where yeah. it's, isn't it crazy how it, it can is. make it shift like that? What he's saying, friends, is there was no water here. You could see the bottom all the way at the pier like the water was, was pulled out. It's, when those storms are happening, it's crazy oh, it's, the stuff it does. It really is. The water had never been in the yard before. Well, you can see how it's, it's kind of gullet hit yeah. out too. Yeah. They need to fill that in. And, uh, it's really nice. I've still got to rebuild that old barn there. I tore off, I had a room up there. Mm -hmm. There was another apartment up there. Mm -hmm. He said that he would rent that out. He upstairs. was. Upstairs, yeah. He built it for me and Gail in this, about 1970. Mm -hmm. And we stayed down here mm -hmm. in the summertime. So that was the spot y'all would stay in upstairs over there. Yeah, but like I say, I've tore it off half of it. Mm -hmm. So that's your last building, and you're that's the last building. You got it I all got done. Do. Well, I mean, the work you've done is unbelievable. That house, that second story, is is amazing looking. But it's uh, been working on it since 2004. Wow. How years. long did it take you to do the roof changeover? Uh, I got it closed in in about two years. Mm -hmm. You know, completely to where all we had to do was finish the inside mm -hmm. and finish the electrical. So where did you stay while that was happening? You stayed right here. Stayed over here. Okay. It was cold. So it wasn't now. livable during that time period. No. Yeah. This one was. Yeah. But it was drafty. Yeah. <laughs> I put a big air conditioning in it. A uh, little gas heater. Yeah. We worked every weekend. Every Saturday and Sunday. That's something else. Let me show you this one. Yeah, love to. This was a duplex. So did you have back back injury, nerve damage? Is that why you're lifting? Yeah, all down there, they, they burnt the nerves there. Mm -hmm. So it did help some. Mm -hmm. But right there, it caused me to limp. Side, yeah. I had severe nerve damage and I'm a lot better than I was, but I'm still not a hundred percent. Right here, there was a bedroom there for that room. There was a bedroom here for this apartment. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I just took it all the way out to there. Yeah. Made me a cave and a eating place. Yeah. So you got your place for the family to come eat yeah, for big right. occasions and all that kind of stuff. That's right. Really nice. And a man cave. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And then Clint stays over here when he comes. It's one bedroom. Mm -hmm. This is nice. And Clint had me rebuild this one. And, uh, it looks really good. I can tell Clint's been here. You can see the the uh, mattress cover and all that. And the big bed. Yeah, but Clint sells mattresses, friends. Yeah, so he likes that's, big beds. That's his thing. 
Well, this is really cool. You did a great job on this. What I did, I took all the, uh, I wanted to put a garage door in, mm -hmm. and it will not high enough. So I just went up and redid the joist. Mm -hmm. Made you some room. And I put a drop ceiling in it. And if I ever get my barn fixed out there, it's full of tractors and mm -hmm. mowers and stuff. I want to take all this stuff out of there so I can keep my truck in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Make, let it be an actual garage, right? I keep my truck in here, except during the holidays yeah. when we eat over here. Yeah. Y'all have your family get-togethers in here. That's a great place. But when I don't have the table and stuff, I'll put my truck in here. Yeah. Keep it in here. Looks really nice. But, uh, it's worked out good for us. It's extra cool. I got a little bit of everything on tools, and I got that many more out in that barn out there. Mm-hmm. So. It requires a lot of tools to do the work you're doing here. If I need something, I go back. <laughs> yeah, that's the, way it, that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yep. The issue is keeping up with it, knowing where it's at the next time you need it. Yeah. I'm bad about it. I am too. Did y'all fly up? Yes, sir. I was telling Billy when we saw the AMP today, the old AMP and five points. Yeah. So that's where I started out. In you 19. had a shoplifter, so that was your that was your beginning <laughs> store. So tell us when you started. See if I remember it uh, right. Because I remember this as a kid. Nineteen fifty-eight, I believe it was. I was sixteen. Is that is that right? So you started bagging there and then ended up managing. Yeah. So that was the beginning of your grocery. That's right. Career. I started to work when I was 14 at the PX Cherry Point. Worked there for two years and then went to work here at the A and P. Sure did. So you had now, a little shoplifter. I had a there. shoplifter there. <clears throat> and uh, Jimmy Allen was my meat manager. And Jimmy, Jimmy's one that caught him. And. He come got me, so we carried him back to the back back there and asked the boy, I said, uh, I hit him right there, you know, and he had a pack of meat right there, a pack of ham. He said, uh, what's your name? He said, William Stovall. I said, yeah, mine's Joe Lewis. You got some ID? <laughs> <laughs> he pulled that ID out, William Stovall. <laughs> only thing I could think of. Sun Journal next day, William stove all the rest of the shop with us. So I knew I wasn't going to send him downtown. I asked him, I said, have you got the money to pay for this? He said, I can go get it. I said, well, you go get it. I'm going to be here about another 20 minutes. It was about five minutes, six, when we closed at six. About Fifteen minutes later, he come back with the money, and I was glad of that. <laughs> but I read in the paper where it's been about three or four years ago, he got... He got shot over in Maysville somewhere. Oh, Lord. Seemed like he was robbing a store or something. I don't remember now. What well, wow. his middle name different? It was H. It was William Henry. Yeah. William Henry. That's, that's I remember it pretty close. Point. Yeah, you were close yeah, on it. I heard it as a child. Yeah. I remember when that happened. William yeah. Henry. Sure did. That's an interesting story. That's that's crazy. I could probably tell you a lot of stories <laughs> that happened in that story. That was a tough story. He said you had to carry a gun with you sometime. I carried a gun. Yeah. And I had a big pipe underneath the uh, cash register. But, uh, and there was somebody shot at a convenience store across the street. Does that ring a bell? Hmm. I can't remember right offhand. I don't remember. I remember that, but I could be remembering it wrong. That's a little. But. It seemed like I remember somebody getting shot across the street, and that was when you started carrying the gun. Was there a 7-Eleven or something like that, or a Zip Mart across the street? I can't remember, Bill. Zip Mart seems right. But there were some Zip Marts back then. Mm -hmm. But they were shootings all the time. So. Yeah, <laughs> nothing new. Nothing new. And do you remember across from where the Chelsea is now, there's a law office, and that... It used to be J.C. Penney's. Well, we, we no, did. That, somebody said he's it was not talking about across this way. He's talking about across that way. And, and it on the was, other side of Broad. It was a 
Clark's Clark's yeah, drugstore. Drug Clark's drugstore, but on the ad it says you could get your tickets for the show at Clark's Walgreens. So do y'all remember it being called it Clark's wasn't Walgreens? That. It was just Clark's drugstore. It was just Clark's. But in the old ad on the microfish, it says Clark's Walgreens. And it doesn't have the address for it. It just says you get your tickets there or at the cab, any cab driver. Or is it Clark's comma Walgreens? Well, we also had a Clark's store there at one time. But that too. was different. I showed him that, and that's a different Clark's. Cause I so thought zoom that in there, Bill, see if it's Clark's Clark comma Walgreens. I don't nope. remember seeing a see, comma. See, Clark's Walgreens. Tickets now. Clark's Walgreen or any colonial cab driver. So tickets. Well, that Clark's drugstore was independent because I used to, mm -hmm. used to get our See? our prescriptions there. I used to go in and talk to the guy at the pharmacy, and we'd go up front and have a cup of coffee while the girls were filling my order, and then I'd get my stuff and leave. Yeah, they had a little grill in there. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stockton's office was on the side well, of it. Uh -huh. Really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Where's the Where's the ad? I don't see it in your pictures. Where's the ad that for the second one that you took where the guy had? Oh, it's it's in a different area. Okay, because she said she she thinks that, that Jeanette went and that maybe Kitty Wells was I there. I think Kitty Wells was was the big attraction. Yeah, see, it's night. Cowboy Copus, Lubin Brothers, and Alabama Sandusters and Elvis. So that was the second one. It was the Grand Ole Opry. So that's the one she would have gone that's to. That's the one she went to. But yeah. No Kitty Wells. We didn't mention Kitty Wells, so mm -hmm. maybe she won. Maybe it was another show they went to see Kitty Wells at, because they used to go to those pretty regularly. See, this one was after Elvis got big. Later well, year, no, bigger. after the Colonel took him over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he was starting to get big. Well, it says yeah, he wasn't big special enough added yeah. attraction. So he still was not, he was added. Yeah, but look but at how big his name is. Bigger. Yeah, but that's, that was Colonel. He Jenner. was, because, but it was because his name was getting known, but he still wasn't a feature for that show. Yeah, I don't think. he was in there with all the yeah. country mm -hmm. people. Yeah. All right, well, I know we got to roll. Yeah, we got to roll. We had a giant piece of machinery. years ago or so I was an Elvis local Elvis tribute artist and I went through three suits and this was the last suit so I could sold all the other ones but the reason I kept this one was because this one is one that I studied myself so, so you're a, a stud I'm stutter. a stutter yes okay. yeah that's 2800 studs and I found every photograph I could find of the Adonis or the Comet, whatever you want the to call Comet that. It's, I think it had both names, maybe. And I don't think any of the suits were named before Elvis passed. But nonetheless, I found all that I could find. And a, a seamstress, here's something I didn't tell you. So the seamstress was a lady in Kent's named Joy O'Neill. Did you ever know her? The name sounds familiar. She's, she's died now. Her husband cannot remember his first name. His name was O'Neill. So when I go to her house, I'm over there every week for a while because she's doing the sewing. I'm doing the studying on this, right? So we work pretty closely together. Well, as it turned out, her husband, big, tall guy, real low voice, he was the bass singer for one of the gospel bands. I do not believe it was Heaven Bound. And I can't think of... You're talking about the Dixie Melody Boys. Dixie Melody Alan Boys. Alan O'Neill, yeah. Okay. Or Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill. Yeah, of course. Ed O'Neill. His wife did the sewing. Oh, okay. So this is Ed O'Neill from the Dixie Melody Boys. So this is Alan's mama. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, do you know he met Elvis? Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. And Elvis said to him, you look just like J.D. Because That was did. the story that yeah. he told me. So anyway, yeah. yeah. So I was over at her house for hours at the I time. I didn't know that. That's, okay. That's who did the sewing. I did the uh, the studying. 
and we both tried to figure out the kick plates or kick pleats. Mm -hmm. We did them wrong. They don't work right. Um, it was fine, but they're not right. I figured it out afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, I made the belt myself, and it's not made exactly right. I only wore the belt maybe once, and then I just bought this one from V&K. Uh, and that one was what Elvis wore with this suit anyway. Now, you said that there was an issue with the Elvis name. That one, they were, that's before they got in trouble for using, having Elvis So that name. belt is the one that the Hilton gave him for the shows, right? That's right, the okay. attendance record. Right. And so when B and K, so it says Elvis on there. So B and K didn't have permission to right. do that. Aside There's from the belt right aside there. from you know not being actual gold, that's an exact replica of Elvis's belt. But they got in some copyright issues, mm -hmm. and so they changed it to say something else. I can't remember. Like it, Elvis. It or doesn't like say that. Elvis anymore. Uh, you can't buy that anymore legally from from them. For with it said, can we so, buy yours legally? Uh, nope, I'm gonna keep mine. Okay. I'll keep you can buy it legally, I guess. But so anyway, this was a suit that uh, that I wore. I wanted to keep that, and and uh, because it was one that I had was so personally involved in. Me. It's 2,800 studs. Wow. On that suit. So. Not twenty eight oh one, not twenty seven ninety nine. Twenty eight hundred. Mm -hmm. Now, incidentally, and I, I made a little story about about that. So, Kirk Russell making the movie for, um, you know, the Dick Clark movie. I think in nineteen seventy nine. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty good movie. The way I understand it is, is he went and uh, met with Vernon mm -hmm. at Graceland to try to get a feel for Elvis. And my way I heard it, Vernon said, well, why don't you, about the same size as Elvis, why don't you try on one of his suits? This suit, of course, not this exact suit, but this suit, the one it represents is the one that he tried on. And then he kept it to use in the in movie. The movie yeah. So in the movie, that's Kurt Russell wearing Elvis's actual suit. Apparently, Kurt Russell never gave the suit back. And it wound up in Orlando at Hard Rock Cafe, and there's a couple of Hard Rock Cafes there. It's in one of them, um, but so that's interesting. An interesting side note on that. So this ring here, I wore the actual one. Mm -hmm. Mine was just from my show. TCB, right? And that was a Dennis. Do you remember what his last name was? It made the sunglasses. You know, I don't. The, optrom um, the optometrist. The optometrist that did it. I I can't remember. It I is have Dennis. The, I have the certificate of authenticity. I bought that from him. So he said that, you know, Elvis brought his TCB necklace in uh, to say, hey, can you make me some sunglasses that incorporate this? And so Dennis kept it, made a mold, and he started selling from that mold. And that's who I bought that from. Uh, and it's been a long time ago. And again, it was part of the costume um, of just doing the Elvis shows back when until I got too old to pull it off. So that is an unopened bubblegum card. Yep. 36 count, completely full, unopened. Yep, never opened that one. I've got to say. That bubblegum tastes good by now. Mm-hmm. Now this card was one that, of course it's not that black suit, but it's a piece of black leather uh, that was from a real jacket of Elvis's. Um, so that was one of the special cards that you you get lucky enough to find yeah. that card. Now that was done. The story is that uh, that they were giving a bunch of stuff to Salvation Army. It, I'm pretty sure this is related to this. And Mike McGregor saw a lot of the key clothes in a pile. What the colonel was doing was taking the clothes, and they were they were going to cut them up and do things for. Uh, uh, for maybe fundraisers or some yeah. something of that nature. Maybe. Anyway, Mike McGregor grabbed like the white suit that Elvis wore on uh, in '68, the black leather suit that he wore. He saw him on this pile and, and got them, or they would have been cut up, and this would have happened. Yeah, yeah. and it's a shame to have done that to, to yeah. things like that. And now this picture is one that it's an original that you could get at the show. If you went to, uh, you know, in the 70s, uh, the tour shows and stuff, you could have you could have bought that one. But that's an original one from back then. Um, it's this just, book right here, Bill. I bought that new. So okay. Straight. And I think I got mine the same way. Tell us how you got that. So that guy, you know, I went to, of course, Billy and I grew, grew up, we met in early high school, knew each other, mm -hmm. got to be really good friends in high school. And so in the sixth grade, 
uh, at Banks Elementary School, they would, maybe once a month, they would pass out an order form. You fill out what you want, take it home, get the mom, get the money from mom, and bring it back. And of course, that's the book I got. And you could get a book, the Elvis book, and so that come from way back. I got then. the same book, friends, and I did my ninth grade book report uh, was on Elvis, and I still have it. I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, the room used to be my room. My son is a musician, and he's a messy musician. So I right. gave up. We called it M M in the biz. I don't. I don't come up here anymore. Uh, I just told him not to break my stuff because he just throws stuff everywhere. This is all stuff really from the fifties. Um, now, I, again, I said earlier today that I was born a fan, meaning I really can't remember a time that I wasn't a fan. That's because my mom is a huge Elvis fan. This scarf, which was some of the 1950s stuff, came out in 56. She bought that scarf new. In um, 1956. And she would have been, you know, nine years old maybe. We figured that up today and I forgot. But mm -hmm. she would have been a young girl. And also the little heart uh, necklace, she bought that new. Or someone bought it for her new. Uh, whichever way it was. So she kept that all of those years. And then when I was grown, I asked if I could have it. And she knew I would, obviously, she, I would put it in glass and take care of it. You know, the other stuff is stuff that I collected over the years or that, um, you know, people purchased for me. I, it, you know, what do you get, Bill? Well, we'll just get him something with Elvis. <laughs> yeah, you know? that always works, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, my son bought that, at, that painting at Blockbuster, but when Blockbuster maybe when they were going out of business, and I think it was five dollars wow. uh, on a rack, um, and then uh, you know again just some random stuff. This is one of the this train case, not in perfect shape. That's original though. It's original. There was a blue one and there was a brown one. That's the brown one uh, from '56, and um, you know the rest of it's just stuff people have given me over the years. Uh, same in that case over there. I don't think I bought a thing in there. I suspect. So is this guitar original? Yes. That's so that would have been 70s. Or that would have been after death. Uh, you know, I can't re It's after death, certainly. Yeah. But I can't remember off the top of my head when it came out. Uh, there's a thing on it, if I can read it. Uh, 1984. Uh-huh. So it was definitely after. It, there was one that came out in 56 that is... Uh, extremely expensive and these little cards so that's a calendar um, that's got Santa Claus and Elvis on it and I believe those that, were Christmas cards well those mm -hmm. those calendars so if you flip that over there's a calendar on mm -hmm. it and so once a year you could get those free at the record store they mm -hmm. did one every year for a pretty good while uh, I think that's how it went again I, but now the colonel sent those out as Christmas cards the picture the picture the photo. Right. But the calendars, they had different ones each year. They were that size. They would fit in your wallet. And so it's got Elvis on one side and the calendar on the other. RCA, yeah. I think, put those out in conjunction yeah. with Elvis. Again, it's been so long since I started collecting or collected anything. I don't remember a lot of it. I get it wrong now. So this next thing, friends, is going to be PG-13. So if you've got kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my <laughs> wife my wife hates this hanging up here. Uh so this is a pair of uh, Fredericks of Hollywood underwear that I acquired uh, uh, from an Elvis museum that they were closing down. Billy can tell you more about that. The story that was behind Mike Newton's museum yeah. in Pigeon Forge. Yeah. And so anyway, this is how it was displayed in the museum. I feel very fortunate to have been able to get a hold of these underwear that were thrown on stage that were <laughs> held by Elvis. And uh, J.D. picked them up and said, you know, somebody's going to want these one day. Yeah, they were, he was right. Bill did. Yeah. So I wound yeah. up with them. So that's your second J.D. story. Look, since they, made that's it. right. So people yeah. people come over and this is a, they're, for whatever reason, drawn to, why, does, why do y'all have underwear hanging on the wall? Why do you? Yeah. yeah. So it's a good <laughs> conversation piece. Now. So let's go here and we'll go back. There. Yeah. Okay. And again, this isn't usually here, but. It's not like the room was when I came up here. So one of my, the most favorite thing that I have uh, to me is the, and there's certainly better Elvis collectibles, but for me, Elvis Sun Records, you know, to, I believe 
is the birth of rock and roll. I, I, I know there's some controversy about that, but for me, that's the birth of rock and roll is That's All Right Mama. And that's an original copy. And I got that uh, record uh, before eBay. So it was not easy back then to find an Elvis Sun record. And uh, over the, you know, shortly after came eBay. And so I was, I was hunting records and I started buying them. I bought some fakes by accident. Uh, then I bought some real ones. Uh, I would trade up. I would sell what I had and buy another one. At one point, I had all, because this is 1954, 1955, they were, they were simul, uh, simul releases. I don't know if that's the right word, uh, 78s and 45s, because we were going through a transition of people had 78s. Some people are now getting the new thing, which is 45, a lot like 8-track to cassette. Mm -hmm. So they released them in both. I also had all five at one time, uh, 78s, and I sold them just because it, I didn't want to frame them. And uh, I sold them for a little over $4,000 as a set a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, these are the, the, the five original sons. And I had them framed. I just picked out some pictures and stuff to go with them. When I got them framed at Michael's, I said, here's the deal. Uh, Y'all need to go ahead and cut out everything. Here's how I want it done. When you get it ready, let me know because I will so be you, here. But you let them use the fakes. Uh, I gave them, yeah. Here, you can frame the figure out the fakes, figure it out with the fakes, and then I'm going to I'm gonna be here with you when we put this together. Uh, and they, they didn't seem to mind that at all. I think they were glad, really, yeah, that I was Because they there. don't want to be responsible no, for what I would, no. would say. So anyway, and there's some more stuff even in the attic. You know, I, I've, I've got uh, just everything I got as a kid, I, I pretty much kept. Um, these are, for example, all of these are, these are all Elvis records. And these aren't records that I bought years later you know these are records that that i bought back in the day and i think there's some other ones but they're mostly they're going to be elvis and again I, I have every tv guide he's ever been in including the original one from the 50s and there's more of them up there too but i've got a bunch of just stuff that i bought when i was a child and i was trying to see I had, but I, I don't know. And then those are all Elvis magazines and Elvis cards and everything in here is Elvis stuff too. Elvis books. Just a lot of, a lot of stuff. Again, if nobody knows what to get me. They get me Elvis stuff. And that record down there at the bottom corner, mm -hmm. that one is the one that it's pretty valuable. Um, can't remember why I got it so long ago, but it's in really, really good shape. Almost like mint, close to mint. But I forgot why that one is. But not like a sun, but pretty valuable nonetheless. Very cool. And watch your step because he's been doing chin ups. Turn the tree on. Echo. Turn on living room. Does your house do that? It does. Oh, and I hate it. No, I turn that crap off because they're listening to everything. They are listening to everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start here. All right, so this one, back in the, uh, it, yeah, from age 13 or 14, I found I could draw pretty good. So this is, Actually, it was drawn with a magic marker. I drew that in 1989. Uh, that's from, the six, obviously, the 68 Comeback Special. And I was going for a little bit of an abstract, weird thing. And uh, I just kept it. That is actually a copy of the original. Honestly, I lost the original. I have no idea where it is, but I had copied it um, because I worked at a printing company. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for me to... Sam Blacon. Yep, it was easy for me. You were a... A so assistant publisher. Then. I was, which just, yeah, I was. Yeah, that and 50 Cent would get you a cup of coffee, <laughs> right. right? Didn't mean a whole lot. That, I, I also used to do drawings for t-shirts. This was one I did for a t-shirt uh, for a place that was opened in the 50s in Kinston called Shady's. They were reopening it, and they wanted it to have the 50s feel. So that's what I had come up with. Most of the time, I didn't keep 
copies of what I did. That one I liked, so mm -hmm. I kept it and I asked for a copy. I remember this Beatles that you did. Yeah, I did that the same year, 1989, and uh, an insurance guy came over and wanted to wanted to make prints of that one. And I said, uh, it was fine with me. I let him do it. I just said, you need to give me like 20 copies for free. And I've since given all of those away, and I don't still have them. But I don't know if he ever sold them. I have no idea. It didn't really matter to me. Um, so why was it an insurance guy that did that? It just happened to be a guy that came over to sell me some insurance. Okay, so if it was a vacuum cleaner <laughs> guy, you would have done the same deal? I wouldn't have let him in, probably. Okay. I, don't, I don't have any idea. So You're an old vacuum cleaner guy. I am. I am. <laughs> so this is, I believe... That this is a real autograph. Um, you know, in studying Elvis autographs, I know that one is a little bit different. But the reason I believe it is real is, is I bought it from a guy whose father, it was either, it's been a while, it was either his father or his grandfather, and I can't remember which now. Uh, he worked, and I was able to verify it at the time. He worked at the Las Vegas Hilton at the same time that Elvis was playing there. So it would make sense. He would have had the opportunity to have gotten it. And along with it, I got, so I talked to him myself. And I was able to verify his father or grandfather, whichever it was, really did work there. And I have a notarized letter signed swearing that this signature is, the real, deal. is the real deal. So I think it is real, as, about as close as I mean, you can't ever be a thousand percent sure. But yeah, I think, unless you saw him. So. I think it is, and so I, I, I really am proud of that one. Uh, it's original souvenir booklet. Um, this is the original TV guide in really good shape. And since then, and I've had this frame for probably 15 years, um, you know, since then, now there's a reissue of that, which has probably dropped the value of this because mm -hmm. now it's hard to tell which one is which. I had this frame long before the reissues were out, and then this one was a, a second one. It's a harder. To, it's hard to find this one. Not quite as hard to find this one, and I think this one was 1960, if I remember correctly. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head where he made the cover again. And then again, I've got all the ones that he ever made the cover. There's a lot of them, but they have zero, near zero value, except for these two. And then I drew that and quit drawing uh, after that one. This, Believe it or not, drawing kind of stressed me out a little bit. So you hung it up. I hung it you up. You retired after Clint. Yeah. Uh, 25 years later, I drew a picture of my wife, and it's hanging up in there. And I'd I, like to see it. Yeah. I'll... First time I've drawn anything since I drew that. I really put it down. I was a bit of a perfectionist, and it took, I couldn't draw fast. And so this took me a week, and I obsessed about it, and it bothered me because it doesn't look right, and it doesn't look right. And I do a lot of tearing it up and starting over and... And erasing and going again. That looks pretty good. It's stressful. So. And your brother, ironically, is named Clint. Does he think he's an Eastwood? No, he does not. You think you're Clint Eastwood? No, I. But he is. I, next to Elvis, so Clint is. Clint yes, is man. He's up there. Him and and uh, Adam West. Yeah. No, 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 no. So this is a really good shape bubblegum card set from 1956. Um, a lot of people have this set. And, uh, but this one is in really good shape and it's, you know, it's each one and I collected them one or two at a time. I didn't buy the set already made. Um, and this was one autographs. Was this, this autographs of people that I like, you know, that I collected over the years that are real autographs. And then this one I asked you about, yeah. uh, because I don't know why this isn't more valuable than it is, but. Apparently, that's an original ticket. I yeah. just don't know how there were so many. According to Stephen Schutz, his buddy acquired these tickets from uh, some people in Tupelo, and they were uncirculated tickets. Mm -hmm. Like, they would have a roll pre-made up, and somehow they, he got a couple of rolls, and they made these with the rolls. I think he mentioned there was 900 tickets is a number somewhere in that neighborhood. Is this is this numbered? Yeah, it, it is numbered, something? but it says it's 82 of 1956. Okay, so 1900, okay. And they wouldn't have made 1956 tickets just because it was year 1956. And so there's just a lot that doesn't make sense to me about yeah. that ticket. Yeah, I see, what you, I see what you mean. The 1956 doesn't make sense. But it may be that they got a lot more tickets than that. But, but I bought it in person at the museum in Las Vegas. Yeah. And they swore to me that's an original ticket from that yeah. show. 
Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. It's a neat piece, and I, I did not pay a fortune for it. So. The pricing is right. A dollar fifty would probably be right for that time frame, because he was really famous then. Yeah. But, you yeah. Know. It, it was. It yeah. Was, he went home, and this piece up here. Uh, I got from the spa guy before anybody. Before he was the spa, spa guy. guy. That's right. Uh, Billy uh, met Scotty Moore and worked out a deal with Scotty after that. Actually, this you had not worked out that deal with Scotty when you got really? it for me. You had met Scotty and you got yourself one and you got me one. And probably got Troy one, I would bet. Yeah. And then it was after that you got with him and, and, uh, and asked about doing that. After. Very cool. Thank you, Laura. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Just you. To yes, ma'am. Okay. So yeah, it was it was so you this was you had not I don't think you met Scotty. So that would have been nineteen ninety nine. Right, you hadn't met Scotty. This was where you went in and found out, hey, if I I can buy these. I can buy these, right. Yeah. And so you called me super excited and said, Man, I got you something. I can't wait for you to see it. Yeah. And of course you got it uh, and I've had it framed ever since. And this was a long time ago. That had to be ninety eight or not, I think ninety eight. Long time ago, but I was like, I can't believe it. That's that's that, that was pretty cool. I couldn't Scotty believe Moore. that I could get a Scotty Moore signature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's was how that went, and and um, so of course that's where my first Sun record went. Uh, that's a fake that's in it now. I bought so many fakes, and learned the hard way that one day, one weekend, I sat down and did a. I started writing down everything I knew about the 45s, the Sun Elvis 45s, and how to distinguish them from a real one from a fake one. And, and that I had to do with push marks and all kinds of Push marks and the space between the etching. Uh, and so I met a guy online named Jim Flanagan who had a huge uh, Elvis collection. In fact, the Jerry Osborne book, it's got James Flanagan as a, you know, special thanks or acknowledgement or something because he was an advisor for those books. She's not going to be able to get out, Bill. But go ahead. She will. She'll be able to get out. So anyway, I, um, I, I met him. We never met in person. We used to talk on the phone and talked online. And I learned a lot about the Sun Records from him. He knew a lot. Uh, so I decided nobody, I kept seeing people selling fakes and I didn't think we were selling them on purpose. That I, I think they thought they were real. And I saw people selling real ones that they thought they were fake. And because it had the number 72 etched in it. So they thought that meant that it was printed in 72, which isn't true at all. So I wrote an ebook uh, and sold them on eBay for five bucks and sold a ton of them. And so then I became this Sun yeah. Record expert for a few years. And now still people find it because I no longer sell it. It's floating around. But that ebook is still out there. Oh, it's still out there. And people will ask me questions now and I can't remember the answer. I have to go back and read my own book because it's been so long I, I forgot, yeah. you know, but they just read it and don't realize, you yeah. know, all that stuff's drifted away from me. But yeah. Well, Bill, I love it, man. We've had a great time. Yes. I love you, my man, man. my brother. And uh, we a had a great, great time. This been, guy been... was in my wedding. <laughs> Literally a groomsman in my wedding. We've been Elvis friends for a long time and friends aside from yeah. that. So, man, I appreciate you showing us all your stuff and I appreciate you going with me today. I don't know if it'll show up in this video, but we went to Newburn today where his family uh, is from and uh, got some great stuff and some great footage. So if it's not this video, make sure you look for that video, Elvis and Newburn. But we've had a great time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And may, may not be finished. You never know. Oh, we're never going to be finished. Sorry about that. My phone is, Siri is always listening. Yeah. Siri? Uh-huh. Yeah. So he asked me if, uh, if my system at home would turn the Christmas tree on just by my voice. No, it won't because <laughs> I cut that crap off because I know they're listening. Yeah. So this is the picture that Bill drew of Scarlett and uh, Cabo. This is y'all in Cabo? Yeah, the snapshot was in Cabo. That wasn't really the background, but she loves Cabo. So is, how far was this since you did the Clint Eastwood? 25 years. So it's 25 years between Clint Eastwood and Scarlett. Yeah, I didn't draw anything between them. That's really good, Bill. Looks just like her. Yeah. <laughs>